Hi, it's ABC Mouse, your friendly guide to adventure. Imagine we could be heading to the pyramids of Egypt or the Great Wall of China. Are you ready to see where we'll land on the map today? Let's Geo go! Hey everybody, let's Geo go! With ABC one, two, three, and Do Re Mi, there's endless people and places to see. From the classroom, they can search and explore. With every adventure, you learn more. They visit countries near and far. They love to. to meet us at the fish tank. Hmm, I wonder where he is. Maybe he's late. ABC is never late. Well, where else could he be? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Bye. Boy, he sure loves swimming with these fish. Hey, remember that picture the teacher showed the class? The place with all those beautiful fish? Yes, they were every color you could imagine. Oh, I bet ABC would love to swim with those fish. <laughs> I bet you're right. Hmm, what was that place called? Oh, it was the Great Something. Sounds like we need to... Search, search it! it! Come on! Hmm, there are lots of places in the world where there are plenty of colorful fish. This says the Great Barrier Reef is a giant protected park in the Coral Sea near the continent of Australia. That's it! The Great Barrier Reef! It's more than 1,600 miles long and has over 1,500 different kinds of fish. 1,500 kinds of fish? Where? There! The Great Barrier Reef! It's made up of more than 900 islands and nearly 3,000 smaller reefs! What's a reef? It's something that's underwater that a ship can run into. It can be made of rocks, sand, or something called coral. This says the Great Barrier Reef Park is the biggest coral reef in the world! Coral reef? I wonder what that is. I know how we can find out! <laughs> Me too! Great Barrier Reef, here we come! Let's Geo go! That's the world famous Opera House in the city of Sydney. That's in Australia. We must be close. Look, a Great Barrier Reef boat tour! One, two, three, and do re mi! Good eye, mate! Hello! We've come to explore the Great Barrier Reef. Well, you're in the right place. Welcome aboard Anjay and Becky's tour boat. Aw, look at that animal! It's so cute! That's a dugong. They're friendly, naturally curious mammals. And so are we! <laughs> so we thought it was the perfect picture to put on our boat. I'd sure love to see a real live dugong. We aren't officially open for tours until tomorrow. Oh! But we've been doing some practice tours, so we can make a map of this part of the Great Barrier Reef. Well, do you need any practice passengers? Well, yes, actually we do. <gasps> yes! yes! We just finished mapping an underwater meadow of seagrass we found over there, where the dugongs like to graze. Dugongs eat grass? Breakfast, lunch and dinner. Some people even call dugongs the cows of the sea. That meadow of seagrass is protected from the waves by the coral reef here. Oh, the coral reef! What exactly is coral? Well, corals are small animals that live in parts of the ocean that aren't very deep. They have a hard covering on the outside of their bodies and they can attach themselves to rocks and to other corals. That's 
fascinating. Well, these little critters poke out and grab tiny bits of food floating by. When a coral dies, its hard covering is left behind and a new coral attaches to it. Over time, so many corals pile on top of each other that they make a reef that goes from the bottom of the ocean up towards the surface. That's amazing! Mm -hmm. Yes, and scientists think that the corals here in the Great Barrier Reef first started growing about 6,000 years ago. No wonder it's the biggest coral reef in the world. Uh, look over there! Wait, come back! I just wanted to say hello! Goodbye? Let's see if we can get us a closer look. I like how you think, Andre. Uh, could we go just a little bit faster? I'm afraid we can't go too fast, ABC. There could be jagged coral ledges right under us. This is our first time through this part of the coral reef, so we need to be careful. I like how you think, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a coral reef right below us? With lots of fish? <laughs> yes, lots of them. Oh, that sounds amazing. I've got to dive in. He really likes to swim with fish. The coral reefs provide protection from ocean waves, so eggs can hatch and the youngsters can hide from big predators. Big predators? <laughs> like sharks. part about the sharks. Sharks? No worries, mate. You don't need to go into the water to see what's below us. He doesn't? I don't. Andre built a surprise into our boat. Whoa! Cool! A glass-bottomed boat! It's so beautiful! Those are anemone fish. Oh, here's a fun fact. They're also called clownfish. The clownfish? That's more like a funny fact. <laughs> <laughs> Look! Ah, oh, we're over the seagrass meadow now. Time for another surprise. Yes! Our boat has an underwater microphone, so we can hear the sounds of the Great Barrier Reef from below the surface. Best boat ever! Those clicking sounds the dolphins are making bounce off of things around them to let them know if they're about to run into something dangerous, like a shark. Or something friendly like a dugong! Aw, look! A baby dugong! It's coming right towards us. Well, I told you they were curious. Well, I'm curious about them too. Hi, baby dugong. The mom is protecting her baby. From what? From that. Do re mi fa so la ti. Whoa! Look at the size of that crocodile. It's almost 20 feet long. How do you like the tour so far? It's great and filled with lots of surprises. Whoa! I thought the crocodile was big. Oh my goodness! That whale looks about 30 feet long. That's a minka whale. They're very friendly and very intelligent. It sounds like it's talking to us. I wish I knew what it was saying. I bet it's saying, hello, my new little friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <whoops. laughs> Another surprise? Yeah, we seem to be caught on something. Ah, we're officially stuck. Oh, we're so sorry this is happening on your tour. No worries, mate. We love a good adventure. <laughs> <laughs> wow! It's a sunken fishing boat. It looks like we're caught in a fishing net. If we get unhooked, we can be on our way. We better hurry, though. If we don't get free soon, we'll be stuck here all night. Oh, yay! Sleepover! reach to untangle the net. The space between our boat and the reef we've drifted over is too small. Hey, I'm small. Maybe I can help. I'll be right back. Good luck! Barrier do go. 
Pokemon Minka Whale Crocodile Boat Stuck on a Net Tour Ever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was full of surprises. So many fish. So much fun. And now I believe this adventure is done. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's time to sing along. We wanted to take our friend ABC to swim with the fishes under the sea. We carefully searched into our great little leaf. We found the amazing Great Barrier Reef. Oh, the sea life we saw. It's hard to name it all. There were clownfish and sea anemones. Parrotfish, dolphins, and seagrass, of course. And dugongs, the cows of the sea. We saw sharks and crocodiles. We saw a minkle whale and got caught on a sunken ship. ABC dove down to free our boat from the net. In all, it was an awesome trip. What a great barrier dugong, minkle whale, crocodile boat stuck ecosystem tour. Our adventure at the Great Barrier Reef on a glass bottom boat was the best for sure. Ready for one more adventure? Let's see where our curiosity takes us now! Hey, everybody! Let's Geo Go! With ABC123 and Do Re Mi, there's endless people and places to see. From the classroom, they can search and explore. With every adventure, you learn more. Volcano looks just like the real thing. Thank you. Ready? I found everything we need to make your volcano erupt. Yes! An erupting volcano? What a great way to start a day! <sighs> okay, I'm ready. Red food coloring, vinegar, baking soda. Stand back! No rainy fossil lets you. Volcano! <laughs> that was awesome! Of course, real volcanoes don't really erupt because of baking soda and vinegar. I wonder what real lava is made of. Huh, me too! I know! Let's search it! it! This says that deep inside the Earth there is a super hot liquid made of melted rock. It's called magma. And sometimes that magma flows up through the cracks in the Earth and breaks through the surface. That's called an eruption! Wait, if magma is liquid rock, what is lava? Look, it's the same thing. When the liquid rock is underground, it's called magma. And when it's above ground, it's called lava. There are actually scientists who study volcanoes. They're called volcanologists. This says volcanologists who wanted to learn more about how volcanoes work built a special place called an observatory right on top of a volcano. And guess what? It's on an area of land that's completely surrounded by water. Hawaii! Hawaii is one of the 50 United States. But instead of being one piece of land like most states, Hawaii is a group of islands. Which island is the observatory on? There! The Hawaiian Volcano Observatory is on the big island of Hawaii. Ooh, on the big island, two volcanoes named Kilauea and Mauna Loa are still erupting. I love adventure, but how can you put a building on top of an active volcano? This says even though Kilauea and Mauna Loa still erupt, the volcanologists have a pretty good idea where the lava is going to flow, so they can safely get really close. People can even watch the volcanoes erupt. We can watch a real-life volcano erupt? Well, what are we waiting for? There's an island with a volcano for us to explore. Let's Geo Go! Look at all the different kinds of animals that live 
on the Hawaiian Islands. That sign says Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Come on! It's a big day out here today. The waves are pitching, and I'm hoping to get a barrel on this next run. ABC, one, two, three, and do re mi. Aloha. Hello, I'm Leilani. Aloha. I'm recording my surf vlog. Want to come along for the ride? Sounds <laughs> good. Sure. Here comes a good wave. Remember, keep calm, paddle hard, and snap up as fast as possible. How'd you learn to surf like that? My dad taught me, and my grandfather taught him. And before people surfed for fun, fishermen learned how to ride waves on boards so they could bring the fish to shore that they caught in the ocean. So, what brings you to the island? We want to see a volcano erupt. Oh, I have a friend who can help you. Hold on. Leilani, hey. Carol, you're not going to believe who you're about to meet. Thank Bye. you! <laughs> Cracks in the Earth called steam vents release water vapor and other volcanic gases from below the Earth's surface. Are you a volcanologist? Not exactly. Volcanologists study how volcanoes erupt. I study the rocks that are made when the lava cools. That means you're still a type of geologist, right? That's right. And the Big Island is a great place to be if you're a geologist like me, especially one who likes to surf. Carol, how exactly did these islands get here? Once there were no islands here at all, but then magma inside the Earth started erupting through cracks way down at the bottom of the ocean and came up through the Earth's surface as lava. As that lava hit the water, it cooled and made hills of solid rock. So that's what a volcano is, a hill or mountain that's made when lava turns into rock. Exactly. At first, the volcanoes were completely underwater, but the magma kept coming out and the lava piled up, so they got bigger and bigger. After a long time, the volcanoes were so tall that their tops were above the water. So this entire island was made by volcanoes? Yep. That's why there are so many interesting rocks here to study. Oh, before we reach the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, I've got something to show you. This is the Thurston Lava Tube. It was formed by lava flowing out of the Kilauea Volcano. It's almost 500 feet long and as tall as 20 feet high in some places. Look, it's the end of the tunnel. I never imagined a volcanic island could be so beautiful. When the islands were first formed, there were no animals or plants. Where did they come from? Well, some animals came by sea. They must have been really good swimmers. Yes, some of them, like Hawksbill sea turtles, were very good swimmers. And others might have floated across on clumps of plants and dead trees that were carried by ocean currents. Nature's boats. <laughs> That's right. Birds got here by flying in on strong currents in the air. And sometimes they carried even smaller animals or bugs with them. Air currents were also how Hawaii's only native mammal, bats, got here. Hmm, what about all these plants and flowers on the island? How did they get here? The same way. Their seeds came with the birds and animals or were blown in by the wind. And when people from another group of islands called Polynesia came here on boats more than 1,600 years ago, they brought animals like frogs, toads, deer, sheep, pigs, and goats. It's hard to believe that this whole island was first made from lava coming out of volcanoes. Oh, I can't wait to see real lava. Then let's go to the Volcano Observatory. I've got a volcanologist for you to meet. The Big Island of Hawaii is the youngest of the Hawaiian Islands. It's less than one million years old. A million years old doesn't sound very young to me. A million years might be old to us, but some volcanoes in the world are much older. Even though Mauna Loa isn't the oldest volcano, it's one of the largest volcanoes in the world. Funny, it doesn't look very big. That's because most of the volcano is underwater. That's incredible! Most of the volcanoes in Hawaii haven't erupted in a really long time. 
That's called being dormant. And some of them will never erupt again, which makes them extinct. We observe the volcanoes that are erupting and try to predict when the next eruption might happen and how big it will be. You can tell when a volcano will erupt? Not all the time, but sometimes we can. When magma flows under the ground, it makes the ground shake a little. Like an earthquake? <laughs> That's right. At the observatory, we record the earthquakes and collect and study the lava that comes out of the volcano. Lava? Can we see lava from here? My daughter Jerry can show you a pretty spectacular view of some lava flows if you want. The more spectacular, the better. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad was right. This is spectacular. So, Jerry, when the lava flows into the ocean, it cools and turns into solid rock, which makes more land. That means we're actually watching the big island getting bigger. That's right. Now let's go see some land that's been here for quite a while. Ooh, yeah. sure. That's the Hialawe Falls. It's one of the tallest waterfalls in all the islands. Oh, it's so beautiful. Hold on, I'll show you some more. What's going on down there? That's a Hawaiian celebration called a luau. That's the Hawaiian word for feast. I'm sure they'd be happy to have us as their guests. Really? Aloha, welcome to our luau. A necklace made of flowers? Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, and the smell. Ah, that's called a lei. We give them to special visitors to welcome them to the island. And this is my ohana, my family. Would you like to do the hula with us? Sure. What's the hula? <laughs> it's a dance that's been performed in Hawaii for hundreds of years. You use your hands and hips to tell a story. I love to dance, but I've never done the hula before. Oh, it's fun! Come on, I'll show you. <laughs> this is awesome! <laughs> now it's time to sing along! takes us next. Are you ready to explore and discover something new? Let's Geo go! Hey everybody! Let's Geo go! With ABC, one, two, three, and Do, Re, Mi. There's endless people and places to see. From the classroom, they can search and explore. With every adventure, you learn more.
for. The feeling you get when you have a great idea for something to paint. It's called inspiration. Huh. It'll come. It always does. <laughs> what are you doing, ABC? Walking like a penguin. Wanna walk like a penguin, too? <laughs> sure. The teacher was talking about penguins this morning. They're my new favorite animal. Ooh, what's your favorite kind of penguin? <gasps> There's more than one? Sure, there are many different kinds. That sounds like something I need to explore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Three penguin pileup. <laughs> Let's search it. Whoa, there are so many different kinds. And so many fabulous names. The chinstrap penguin, macaroni penguin, the royal penguin. What about that one? The Galapagos penguin. It says they live on a group of tropical islands in the Pacific Ocean called the Galapagos Islands. Wait, did you say tropical? That sounds kind of warm for a penguin. It says they're the only penguins in the world that live in such a warm place. The Galapagos Islands, huh? It's 19 big islands surrounded by lots of small ones that all belong to the country of Ecuador, which is about 600 miles away. Isabella is the largest island, and Española is the oldest. So how can an island be the oldest? I don't know, but I want to find out. And I want to know more about penguins that live on a tropical island. <laughs> then what are we waiting for? Let's Geo go! Look at all the different kinds of animals and plants that live on the island. Oh, that sign says, Welcome to Galapagos National Park in Spanish. Vamanos, let's go. It's time to explore. <laughs> Look, it's ABC, one, two, three, and do re mi. I'm so excited. Hola. I'm Daniela. This is my papa, Santiago. Oh, can I guess why you're here? Can I? Uh-huh. Oh, I know. You're here to see the giant tortoise? Giant tortoise? It can weigh almost 450 pounds and live to be 100 years old. It can? Wow, that sounds amazing. But it's not why we came. I want to see a Galapagos penguin, and 123 wants to know how one island can be older than another. Volcanoes. Volcanoes? Imagine this. Each time lava flows out of the ground, the volcano gets a little taller. After a really long time, the top of the volcano reaches the top of the ocean, making an island. Oh, the volcanoes that made these islands all erupted at different times. That's why some islands are older than others. Got it. But now I have another question. If the Galapagos Islands were made by volcanoes and the islands are more than 600 miles away from the closest land, how did all the animals and plants get here? The animals either came over the water or through the air. Seabirds that could fly long distances flew here. But for plants, it was a little more difficult. They arrived on the islands as seeds, sometimes in the poop of birds. Or the seeds floated ashore on the sea. And sometimes, seeds were carried to the islands by the wind. Seeds can blow in the wind for almost 600 miles? Yes, very small ones, like grass seeds. What about the animals? Some animals came by sea. If they were good enough swimmers, they could have swum the 600 miles from the land to the islands. And other animals, like reptiles, arrived on floating clumps of water plants. Those are incredible journeys. I think so, too. Papa! We should drop them off on Mariela Islas. That's where you'll find the Galapagos penguins. Right. Bye. Bye. Thanks for the ride. Ooh, it sure is warm in the Galapagos Islands. Do re mi fa so la ti. Whoa. One, two, three. I have that feeling. What feeling? The one I was waiting for back in the classroom. Inspiration. It's so beautiful. Oh, if only I had my paints. I'd start right now. I just might have a new favorite animal. No, I definitely have a new favorite animal. <laughs> That's how it gets rid of salt. Salt? 
Oh, salt that it gets from swimming in the ocean. Wait, iguanas swim in the ocean? This kind of iguana does. Oh, here's a fun fact. They can stay underwater for 30 minutes at a time. 30 minutes? minutes? I gotta see what they're doing under there. Oh, careful, the water is ugh, really cold. <laughs> no wonder penguins like it. But there's so much to see. The iguanas go underwater to eat seaweed. Oh my goodness, listen to this. No other iguana in the world eats underwater. Be right back. Where to now? Oh, there's so much to see in the Galapagos. I'm sure we'll run into something exciting. <laughs> we really need a little warning. Shh. Whoa! It's a giant tortoise. It can go a year without any water. A whole year? I might have a new favorite animal. Do you think this one is a hundred years old? <laughs> Maybe. It looks pretty old to me. ABC123 and Doremi. I am so excited you're here. Hi. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Darwin, and I live here. <laughs> well, not here, but in town. I come up here to find inspiration. Exactly. Inspiration for what? I'm writing a book about the Galapagos Islands. Oh, how fun. Were you named after the famous scientist, Charles Darwin? Yes, although he came to the islands long before I was born. Almost 200 years ago in 1835. Yes, they lived so long that the parents of that giant tortoise may have been alive when Charles Darwin was here making his amazing discoveries. What kind of discoveries? Ah, I'll show you. That's a flightless cormorant. It's only found on two islands in the Galapagos. Flightless? You mean it's a bird that doesn't fly? That's right. Over a really long period of time, that bird's wings got smaller and smaller because it no longer needed to fly. But why? Yeah, for one, when it first came to the islands, it had no enemies, so it never had to fly away quickly. And two, it takes a lot of energy to fly. And it was pretty easy to find its favorite food here without flying. You mean by swimming? Oh, that's right. So, over a very long time, the flightless cormorant's feet became webbed, and their legs became stronger so they could swim better. And their wings, which they didn't need, got smaller and smaller. Charles Darwin discovered that over long periods of time, many other animals on the islands changed too, so they could survive better in this environment. Oh, like how the iguanas learn to swim and eat underwater? Yes, that's called adapting. I call it amazing. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> this was so much fun. Thank you, Darwin. It was very nice meeting you. And it was nice meeting you all. Come back anytime. Bye. Thanks again. That's the best painting of a marine iguana ever. Thank you. I can't wait for ABC to see it. Hey, come see Doremi's painting. But I'm not done yet. Believe me, you have plenty of time. I think ABC's pretending to be his new favorite animal. <laughs> the giant tortoise? Uh-huh. He should be here sometime tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time to sing along. Galapagos, Galapagos, Galapagos Islands. They were made by volcanoes millions of years ago. From saltwater iguanas to Galapagos penguins, here are a few fun facts that you ought to know. Many of the animals that live on the islands have changed or adapted over thousands of years. Now their bodies and behaviors help them thrive in the environment. Now they're very special, so they live only there. Imagine penguins living on a tropical island or iguanas that can swim in the sea. Tortoise that's 100 years old, or birds that swim but can no longer fly free. Galapagos, Galapagos, Galapagos Islands, they were made by volcanoes millions of years ago. With such fascinating animals you'll only find there. If you get the chance to visit, you really should go. There's so many things to see there, you really must go. I've 
I've got my map ready for our next adventure. Where will we go? Let's find out together. Hey, everybody. Let's Geo Go! With ABC, one, two, three, and Do, Re, Mi. There's endless people and places to see. From the classroom, they can search and explore. With every adventure, you learn more. They visit countries near and far. They love to learn wherever they are. They see the world in a brand new way. They make great new friends every day. ABC, one, two, three, and Do, Re, Mi. left a riddle on the whiteboard. Yes! You mean? Yep. It's time for another episode of Guess the Lesson. Are you ready? Absolutely. I love this game. Solve this riddle to learn what tomorrow's class is going to be about. I'm swamped with gators and many big crocs, a river of grass, and some very pink flocks. A river of grass. Gators and crocs? And who doesn't love a very pink flock? Hmm. Let's, Let's search it. it! We know a flock can mean a group of birds, so this place probably has flocks of pink birds. Those are definitely some of the pinkest birds I've ever seen. They're called flamingos. I love how they stand. Wow! Flamingos live in a lot of places. Let's see if any of these places have both gators and crocs. Ooh, so here's a fun fact. Alligators and crocodiles only live in the same place in one part of the world. The state of Florida in the United States. Ooh, there are lots of flamingos in Florida, too. But where in Florida? It's a big state. Maybe this will tell us. River of Grass. A book? Why a book? Look at the title. It's called the Everglades River of Grass. It says this book helped people understand how many different kinds of plants and animals live in the Everglades because there are so many different types of environments there. The Everglades has swamps, islands, forests, lakes, rivers, and yep, even a river of grass. I think we found the answer to our riddle. Then let's Geo Go! That sign says Everglades National Park. It's time to explore. And learn more and more. Hi! ABC 123 and Do Re Mi. I'm Dr. Doyle. I'm a wildlife biologist. I'd love to stop and talk, but I'm heading deep into the Everglades right now. Fantastic! That's exactly where we want to go. What's all this for? It's medical supplies in case an animal needs a little help. Oh no! Is an animal sick or hurt? We hope not, but sometimes we find animals that need some help. This is Dr. Alvarez. Hello. Hello! Hi, Dr. Alvarez! Hello! Welcome to the Everglades. Dr. Doyle, I've picked up her signal again. She still hasn't moved. Who hasn't moved? See that blinking light? That's a panther. It's wearing a tracking device that tells us where it is. Is it okay? That's what we need to find out. It hasn't moved in about a week. And since there are only about 100 panthers left in the Everglades, each one is precious. That's not very many. And if they go away forever, <gasps> they'll become extinct. That's right. And other plants and animals here are in danger of becoming extinct too, like the ghost orchid. There's a ghost in the Everglades? <laughs> Actually, it's a kind of flower that looks kind of like a ghost floating in air. Isn't it beautiful? Very few people have actually seen one. Between pink birds and ghost flowers, this place is amazing! We better get going to see if we could find that panther. 
We will! Want to start the engine on this airboat, ABC? You bet I do! Go ahead, hit that... button! <laughs> Dr. Doyle does everything at full speed! So does ABC! Whoa, look! That's a bottle-nosed dolphin! The only place you'll see one in the Everglades is when you're close to the ocean! What's that? I don't know. A log? Mm, I've never seen a log with eyes. Are you an alligator? Or a crocodile? Good question. The easiest way to tell the difference is the shape of their snout. A crocodile's snout is very pointy. Then I think this one's a crocodile. Another way to tell the difference is when the animal's mouth is closed. If you can see its teeth, then it's a crocodile. <laughs> yep, you're a croc. Dr. Doyle, can you take us into the cypress swamp? I want to show them something. A ghost orchid? <laughs> no. A pink flamingo? Nope. An alligator. They aren't near the ocean like the crocs. Do you see it? Gee, it looks like it's trying to swim in mud. Actually, that alligator is making a watering hole. During some times of the year, the Everglades don't get as much rain. But the water in the hole will stay until the rainy season begins. Not only will the alligator live in the water, the water will attract other animals that the alligator likes to eat. Hey, that's pretty clever. All right, everyone. We're getting close to the panther. <laughs> ABC, I'm wondering if you can help me drive the boat. <laughs> the panther is on the island up ahead. There are more than 9,000 islands in the Everglades. Whoa! Oh boy, I can't wait to explore this island. ABC, those aren't stepping stones. Oh, sorry, fellas, my mistake. But thanks for the help. The Everglades are made up of two main areas. Oh, the uplands and the wetlands. Wetlands are low areas of land that have a lot of water on them. I've spent my life studying how animals and plants live together and survive in wetlands like these. That makes me a wetlands ecologist. But of course, I'm also really interested in the uplands. Which are dry areas like this island, where you can find different kinds of trees. And hopefully a healthy, happy panther. Yeah. According to the tracker, the panther's not that far away. Follow me. Listen. It sounds like nature's performing a concert for us. Listen to that. I didn't know they had pigs in the Everglades. You're a piggy piggy. <laughs> that does sound like a pig, but it's likely a pig frog. A pig frog? <laughs> nice to meet you, Mr. Pig Frog. Do you know what all these living things in the Everglades need to survive? They need the sun! Soil? Water! <laughs> yes! Those are all great examples of what we call non-living things. Together, all of the living things, like the animals and plants, along with the non-living things they need to survive, is called an ecosystem. Wow! The Everglades must be one of the greatest ecosystems in the world! And it's one of the biggest national parks in America. Hey, look at that! Come back here! ABC, don't move. It's right in front of you. I see the panther! You mean panthers! Do re mi fa so la ti now we know the reason that she wasn't moving. <laughs> Two reasons, to be precise. Kittens! And people like Dr. Doyle and I 
are here to make sure they'll have a healthy ecosystem to grow up in. Oh, I think the mom sees us! wants to be alone with her kittens. That's a very good guess, ABC. Let's head back to the boat. Bye. Kittens. Oh, all right. Bye, little kitties. Okay, everybody. As a thank you for all of your help today, how about we spend a little time looking for that rare ghost orchid you were hoping to see? That would be great! <laughs> but I won't be disappointed if we don't find one. Well, why is that? It gives us another reason to come back and see the Everglades National Park again. Yay! <laughs> now it's time to sing along! Big crocs, rivers of grass, and some very pink flocks. Swamps, lots of islands, and miles of bays. You're right, it's the Florida Everglades. Panthers, bobcats, raccoons, and deer. Manatees and dolphins also live here. Wetlands, uplands, lagoons, and more. The Everglades has so many things to explore. <laughs> amazing adventure, wasn't it, friends? <laughs> Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more amazing travels with me, Do Re Me, and One Two Three. I can't wait to see you on our next grand adventure. Until then, stay curious. <laughs>